Hello and welcome to the Book Explosion Golden Compass live show. This month we've been working with Brandon House. Today we are going to be talking all things The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. Oh, for my other computers <laughs> watching this. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to be talking all things Golden Compass and we, there will be spoilers. We'll be taking your questions on Twitter using the hashtag Golden explosion. <laughs> um, and so tweet us your questions. We will be looking at the chat, but just be know, know that we are taking the questions off Twitter. Like it's easier to see on Twitter. Like we might see your question on the chat, but there's a less high of a chance because Twitter yeah. move is fast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so. Jess, you want to kick us off with your thoughts on the Golden Compass? I will kick us off. So I want to give like a little history of me and my relationship with this book. Um, I actually read this book for a college course originally, and I didn't like it. Um, but I do think I, I reread this book for the Book Explosion Live show, obviously. And like, I think that a lot of my enjoyment was sucked out because it was a school read when I first read it. Um, so I really enjoyed it a lot more the second time. I still had some like issues with it, but like mostly my issues just lied in like the fact that it's like such a slow paced story. Even though so many things happened, it's so slow. And like the one thing that I really wish would have like kind of happened was just like a faster pace. But other than that, I loved it. I loved the characters. There's so many like interesting relationships that go down in the story. And I love how like all the characters are just like, terrible basically like they all are pretty like messed up so i don't know i really enjoyed it it was a good time and i loved the audiobook as well a plus i also <laughs> listened to the audiobook for parts of it like i read i read parts of it but everyone was talking about the audiobook so i had to <laughs> listen to it and it was really good it made me like lyra a lot more because in in the book um you know she's kind of rough around the edges but I don't know something about her voice like it had more charisma like hearing the actress like portray her uh made me like her a lot more but um yeah okay I guess I'll start with a, a brief history of my experience with this book as well um because it is like an older release that a lot of people have previously read um I had also previously read this book but that happened like 17 years ago, <laughs> um, like when I was actually 11, 12, um, a very long time ago. Um, and I remember, like, I all I remembered was the very ending of this book and that I really wanted a demon and that I really enjoyed it. Um, so, like, going into it again, it was so much slower than I expected. And a lot of that is because, like, YA in general has changed so much over the years to become like much more faster paced. And like, you gotta like start right away in that first chapter. And when I started rereading this, the first chapter I was like, I don't know what's going on. How did I make it through this book before? Um, but yeah, once I got into the story, I started to really enjoy it. It's much more sophisticated and darker than yeah. I would expect from a typical middle grade book. And there's also a weird, um, like getting used to the omniscient point of view because um, usually we're in like a, a first person or a very close third but this has like the little did she know kind of like foreshadowing feature um, which you don't see a lot anymore but yeah I, I really enjoyed this um, I'm super excited to continue on with the series especially after the ending and yeah I think that's everything for now <laughs> A brief history of me. And <laughs> we have no history. We do not know each other back in the day. What I, I it was kind of in my peripheral in high school because that's when the movie came out, and a lot of people I know, like kind of know, were talking about how they didn't like the movie, and that just made me think. Well, I guess I'm not going to see that movie, and I'm not going to read that book. <laughs> um, so I'm really glad I was pushed to pick it up now because it's something that I've always been curious about. 
And I agree with both Kat and Jesse in that, like, it was so much slower than I was expecting it to be. And I really enjoyed the world and the whole concept of demons, and I think is fascinating. And um, there was so much interesting stuff that happened. I agree about the middle grade, like, being, like, dark and sophisticated for middle grade, because there were points where I'm like, okay, I'm lost. Like, I need to rewind. I was listening to the audiobook. The audiobook is fantastic. It's a full cast. But the omniscient point of view, I think, actually made it kind of harder to follow um, via audiobook, because the voices would change back to Philip Pullman and I wouldn't be as um, engrossed in it because I feel like he wasn't as much of like an actor as um, the people who were doing the voices who were actually really endearing and um, did, I, I really enjoyed Lyra as like this um, like kind of spunky uh, female lead and I actually, I liked her, it just made me like her more when I watched the movie just now. I, I really liked the actress they had to play her. Um, and in the book, like, you really feel like she's, like, a nine-year-old, you know, like, her voice, um, in the audiobook, and it's really cute, but she's like, no, we can do it, we have to save him, <laughs> like, I love her little British voice, um, so I really like the story, and I want to know what happens, and I think it's, like, the, the polar bear kingdom is so fascinating, yeah. like, the whole system, like, I want to know more about all of it, like like what Jesse said, it, it's kind of slow paced, but like so much happens, like the, yeah. the witches and like their politics. Oh, and their I love the witches aspect too. It had this like blend of like all this different witch lore from different stuff that I've read, and I really liked like how they were kind of just they were like really uh, wisdomous. <laughs> they're very like because they wise. <laughs> That's what I, yeah, but why is it so <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I'm really, I'm really glad that I finally read it, watched the movie. I feel so in the know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you don't know, uh, anyone who's just getting in here, we are taking questions on Twitter using the hashtag golden explosion. So tweet us your cues. Jesse, do you have any cues ready, Mr. Moderator? I do. What would you do to stay safe from the gobblers? Asks Proud Book Lion. Oh, um, hide. <laughs> <laughs> they um, got you outside, I feel like. Yeah. I feel like it's hard to stay away from them and to stay safe from them. They're going to come after you and they're going to get you. Well, also, the thing is, like, I, I don't leave my apartment, so I just stay indoors. <laughs> I feel like I'd be fine. <laughs> That's um, fine. Just like your door cat. You're good. Um, <laughs> no, but they went after children who, for the most part, wouldn't be missed. Um, you know, like they would go after poor children who were kind of wandering the streets on their own, um, or a lot of the gyps Egyptian kids because they, um, you know, were kind of their own culture, like kind of off the grid. And so they didn't have like a police they would report to. Like the police wouldn't care, like if their right. kids were. So, put it in that way. I don't know. I just I don't I don't trust people. Like I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't trust the the lady. I don't think it didn't seem like she had any special superpower. She was just like really nice and pretty. Um, Very convincing, like yeah, manipulative, yeah. kind of but without I, like recognizing it. I th I think I could. I think I don't think I'd fall for it. I'd be too suspicious. Really. You know, I think I've been trained too much not to trust strangers yeah. at all. So I'm going to like, hide my demon and run the other way. Like, don't die, die. <laughs> um, um, Who was your favorite character? Asks favorite Wicked character? West Books. Favorite character. Oh. My favorite was, well, now that i watched the movie, I really like the balloon man. Um... You know what I'm talking about? What's his name? Like Scarsgard, Scars Dale, Mr. First name is Lee. Mr. Scars something. I don't remember the name. It's definitely Scar something. I can't remember. <laughs> um, word for word, but I really like him. I really liked um Father Coltrane. Coltrane. Col yeah, Col Far Carter. Um, uh, I don't remember the names either. Yeah, they oh, so many proper nouns. <laughs> No, I kept thinking of him as a priest because, like, on the audiobook, it sounds like she's saying Father 
cold train. Yeah, so it sounds like father, but it's like far dog. <laughs> far <laughs> dog. <laughs> um, what about you, Kat? I, well, I keep wanting to say like Damon instead of Demon, so. <laughs> I, that's how I, when I first read the book, that's how I read it. I didn't realize it was pronounced Demon. I thought, but like, Damon. I listened to the audiobook. I should be like, fine, but I'm still like, Damon? <laughs> it's that A, it's that A, E, it's that A. I know. Um, I, I really liked the uh, Farder card. What's his last name? I don't, I can't say any of these names. Um, I also like Lyra's demon. Pantaliman. 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 Yes. He was so cute. Yeah, I liked Lyra's demon as well. I, I like, liked him more in the movie for some reason, though. I don't know why. Yeah, um, he's the movie, too? I'm the only yeah. one in the movie? <laughs> you should have watched it. I should have. Um, what did I do? <laughs> and I also really like the polar bear guy, but I can't remember his name. Polar, I know. You're Rick. You're Rick. You're Rick. You're, you're, Rick. you're Rick. It's like Eric, Eric but not. <laughs> I like him a lot. Not like so. Eric? No, huh? he's like, like Eric, but not. Is it, oh, I was like, is it spelled? His name is like. His name is like yeah. Eric, but not. But it's not. Eric. Okay. Your, your Eric. Yeah. yeah, I really liked him too. He was a very uh, honorable character. Yes. <laughs> Easy to like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's hard to pick a favorite because they're all like really interesting. And I feel like we're yeah. just seeing like the beginning of them too. Right. Yeah, like obviously Lyra is our main character. Like she's very important um, in, in this world, and like she still has like a destiny that like we don't really know exactly what's going on yet. Um, but it really is like an ensemble story because it's not just about her. Um, like all the characters, um, especially more than I've seen in middle grade today. Like they all have so much more backstory and so much like more depth to their relationships than even Lyra understands and we still right. get to see it. So I really love that aspect. I'm really interested in the whole um what's her name? Mom and Uncle Miss, Miss Coulter Coulter. and Coulter. Azrael. Yeah. Israel, yeah. Uncle Azrael and Mrs. Coulter, like what the hell is going on there? That weird ending scene, like it could go like a bunch of different ways. But obviously they've been in cahoots. And obviously oh, not, not I don't think they've been in cahoots. I just don't okay. think that they're on opposite sides. I think that they've been in somewhat of a cahoots. Like they know they've been aware of each other. Um and like cause I don't know, it was just weird how they were like embracing all of a sudden. I think he was doing it to let Lyra get away. Um you uh, know, it, it felt well, like I, he was reacting to that. Um, it felt like, cause he was like urging her to run, um, as soon as they, I don't know, one, I don't know if it was Pan's alignment or if it was him that was like, that said something about like running. It was, it was Pan, but Pan was telling her to run. Yeah. And I think, and as soon as he said that, the dad was like, oh, make out with me. So I was like, is that a distraction tactic? Like, is he trying to, and it was just so evil. It's like, they just murdered her best friend. Yeah. Um, to like create this bridge and but he's still protecting her but also he was like so mean to her when she came to his to his aid with the thingy i just that whole section i feel like it's something i have to like read again to really get all the underlying um meaning out of it you know yeah. Yeah, i didn't get that out of it i thought it more as like they were confronting each other and like i i feel like they're they both have ideas about dust and they both want to carry on with their experiments. Like her dad wasn't against what Miss Coltier was doing. He was just saying that it was like short sighted and like all the experiments were like pointless. Like you just need to do it once to create the bridge. Like he wasn't against her experimenting on the kids. He just thought it was like a misguided, like not the right way to experiment on them. Cause he turned around and murdered Roger. Um, yeah. Not like all along we thought he was on the good side, but like they both are terrible. Um, yeah, is that the thing? Like our parents are the actual worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was so you know, to the beginning where like the master was trying to poison her father, and it's like, well, maybe yeah. maybe the master is the one good guy here. Like, yeah, I know, I know. That was the whole thing. Okay, so in the movie. The, it's not the master that goes to poison the dad. It's his magisterium guy. And I don't know 
if that was in the book at all this whole and like i missed it because there were sections where i was like wait i'm a little lost was there a magisterium at all or was that like an underlying thing that they didn't really talk about and they were just trying to like explain it better in the movie or give us a more solid like man like because in the movie like the magisterium is like the man that like yeah. wants to believe only what they taught you i think they were trying to give you a more solid man because like yeah. in, in the book the magisterium like is mentioned a couple times but it's more vague and i feel like that's yeah. more our like big villain later on um okay. like in the future books i feel i think i don't know we haven't read the future yeah. books when i was reading the book it felt kind of like uh like in a way like the christian catholic church and like how they were like you can only and them making it kind of like they can only you can only believe what we tell you to believe like they were like this all ruling sort of church mm -hmm. and then in the movie calling it the magisterium so often it kind of like made it just feel like it was like this government headquarters yeah. sort of deal. Um, where it got like I had got like a lot of biblical sense stuff from the book like the whole or um, Demon thing was really interesting. They're talking about Adam and Eve. And this is a part that I should have listened to again But like I was like I, I want to like see what happens. So I just like kept going yeah. but like so demons originated with Adam and Eve and like the snake was her demon I I didn't I, think the snake was her demon I need to read that part again, but yeah. I think that demons originated with them. They're, no, the, the, before their demons would shift shapes, and then after she ate the apple, their demons Listen. locked into a form. But like, it had something to do with the snake, because it definitely does. Because he was like with her, talking to her. It kind of felt like the whole demon. That's really the best. Good. Oh, I don't know. I, I might need to read that part again, but I feel like that's just trying to mirror the biblical story. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like that's the reason they told. Like, I feel like that's why it's there because it must have something, like, line to it. Because it, it, I don't know. It's so interesting, and I, I it was like s it went so fast that part. And I'm just like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we got the explanation about dust, but like I am still so confused. Like I I'm still want so to dust. Like, and even and I mean, at the end, we do have we finally have Pan saying like you know, um, your mom and dad are saying that, like, dust is bad, so why don't we operate under the opposite knowledge of what they're going for? Like, what if dust is good? Um, yeah. So I like that idea. I like that we don't know a lot, but I, I need, an like, I need answers. I want more, because I feel like they, they are, there are answers. Like, Philip Pullman has done so much like intricate sophisticated world building and development on this series in this world i feel like he, he knows the answers and they're probably in the later books i just need to read them but i, 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 I want to know what's going on yeah everything dust related is really interesting and vague right now i mean like it was super interesting when she started talking about like how when you come to adulthood and your uh demon settles like that's when you start getting all these like hard feelings to deal with and like uh you know like bad thoughts and kind of just like you know what happens as you grow older like you kind of get more existential and you can go to dark places and, yeah. and mentally um and thinking that you know not having your demon could stop that is kind of again drawing back to like the adam and eve thing like the snake is what makes her take the apple and then like that's why there's you know shame and death and everything bad because she had the apple and i guess they're saying you know as an adult with the demon like that demon is what causes everything bad to happen to you um when really though like it feels like the demon is kind of you know you uh yeah, it's yeah that's I, like i feel like their belief is like so wrong and like your demon is like your soul. It's a part of you and detaching it. It kind of like turns you into a shell. Just like, yeah. it's, it reminded me of like delirium when you get the operation. Like, it's like, they don't want you to have bad thoughts. So now you have no thoughts at all. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's a super like in-depth, complicated reflection of like, if taking that story too literally to the point where like they're murdering people trying to like get rid of original sin yeah they're, they're like oh this kid is gonna grow up and sin so let's kill him now so he never gets the chance 
Yeah, like let's make him brain dead so that he doesn't have any. He can just be a shell. <laughs> like, um, it's super dark. <laughs> no, it really is. It's a lot darker than I feel like most YA even. Like, but yeah. half of the adult books I've read, because like, and they. That's a problem that I had with the movie. I really enjoyed watching the movie right after I read the book because it was interesting to see. Like, there was a lot of exposition, um, but the exposition, I think, is the only way that young kids would have a chance of understanding this story yeah. in such a... Even, like, me, like, we're talking about it right now. Like, we interpreted it in different ways. We heard different things. Like, there's a lot going on in this book, and it's hard to take it all in at once. So they kind of, like, simplified it and told us facts that we don't get to like the end of the book like right in the beginning yeah it was like there's multiple universes like that's how it opens up and like we live in one where your soul is outside your body like it's like just they oh, it, like, like feeds you like the basic setup interesting yeah. i mean movies tend to do that a lot um just in general uh really like movies but like um it works i it works better yeah. when they don't I mean, it works sometimes, but I mean, obviously we like it better when you can see it. Like in Harry Potter, we open up with, you know, the openings and you kind of fall into it with Harry. Yeah. We don't, see, but this wouldn't really fall into it. Um, like, you not jump in and go. Like, uh, even in, in the book where it does have like that longer, like, you got to piece it together yourself kind of setup. Um, I was really lost at first. Like, I had trouble getting into this and I was like, how did 11 year old cat read this book? Like, I'm so impressed with her right now. <laughs> I feel like if I read this at that age, like it would have been one of those, and I remember this happening to me a lot. Like you just read it, but you don't really understand everything you're reading. You're just yeah. reading it. I, I, I know that's what it was for me when I read it before. Like it was a fun adventure story. Like I really wanted a demon. Cause I was like, oh, it's like a pet. Um, like so much went over my head. Um, but, like, I enjoyed a lot of it because it's, like, you know, she's on this road trip and um, to the north and with the bears and the witches and, like, playing with all the Egyptian kids and their boats. And, like, there's so much, like, cool scenes that are easy to understand without the context. But, like, so much of the context went right over my head. Yeah. And I think that happens also with, like, a lot of, like, books we have to read for school in general. Like... If we went back and read them now, like, we'd see so much more that they were, hope like, that we kind of maybe subconsciously, like, take in and, like, but it's not the same as reading it now when you're, like, whoa, this is, this book has, like, a whole different thing going on than I thought. Yeah. Um, like, I, I know I didn't understand, like, any of the politics and, like, and he, Phil Pullman does a lot of, like, subtext in relationships, um, like, between um, Farter and... Sarah Tina, the witch, um, like you can, you, they talk about it individually briefly. They never have page time together, but you can still like get a grasp of their relationship and what happened between them and like their love for each other still after all this time. And like, she doesn't like, they don't necessarily want to see each other again. Cause like now he's aging and she's not and, like so complicated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like, like, there's virus very limited perspective like we still get yeah. so much out of it so i know that like that went completely over my head the first time i read it like I so much backstory about them and like their whole the sun ordeal and just like you see their whole life play out and like how he must have gotten so depressed and you know went through a really hard time after that and she went to serve her clan because like it wasn't gonna work out and oh. it's just um and that's really just was too side characters yeah. like, I, really, I think that was one of my favorite parts like hearing that backstory and hearing from Serafina you know what I really liked the conversation between Serafina and the balloon man yeah. um that's it that's it like Lyra was like passed out at that time but we yeah. saw like this glimpse into the war is coming and she's like we're on Lyra's side like you're in a war whether you like it or not and he's like he was talking about like free will and stuff and just yeah, they had so many great conversations and, like, scenes like that. Jesse's having a lot of trouble. I don't know what's going on. He said in Boxster, um, he's like, I have to restart my computer screen froze. So, Jesse's having technical issues. He'll oh. be back soon. <laughs> Another question. We've been having, like, an in-depth conversation about the book for a while, but without talking to anyone else. Let's see. We got 33 new results we can hear. 
Um, ooh, this is, I don't think I have an answer for this. If you woke up one day and found yourself in possession of the altheometer, oh my God, that's not how I've been pronouncing it. How do we pronounce it? Altheometer? Yeah. Al altheometer? No, altheometer. I don't know. Altheometer. Oh, what what truths would you look for? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Question. Well, are we assuming that I have, like, Lyra's natural talent to read the thing? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Of course. Um, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I mean, like, if we're allowed to use it for mundane stuff and not, like, uh, let's save the world stuff. Yeah, yeah, that changes things. Where is my cell phone? <laughs> I'm kind of like, where's the best sale right now? <laughs> Where will I find a good outfit for this event? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, stuff like that, because, like, I don't know. I, I don't have any, like, big questions in my own life right now where I would like need those answers. Like a lot of my own life stuff is just like, I'm in control of a lot of things. So I don't, I don't have a lot of like wondering questions. Like if I, I know if I want to get a book published, like step one is to finish the book. <laughs> I don't need to read the al altheometer to tell me that. Like I yeah. know. <laughs> You know what you could do, like, if you're dating and you have the altheometer, like, just, like, save time, like, is this going to work out? <laughs> like, okay, I'm just gonna skip this. I would like, 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 the, um, uh, the rom-com version of Lyra is, like, a 20-something year old on the altheometer. <laughs> like, she's, like, on Tinder, and, like, you start talking to somebody, okay, should I keep talking, or is this the waste of my time? <laughs> Oh, wait, that would be really funny. Are you, like, judging her off to the side? <laughs> <laughs> I see a sketch here. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, like, if you didn't have the responsibility of the world on your shoulders, the altheometer could be a fun little toy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, should we get another question? Let's see. What animal would your demon be? That's a question that we have a lot here. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's almost like a what is your Patronus? I feel like Patronuses and demons are very similar in that they like are really reflective of the person and their personality. Mm -hmm. I don't know what mine would be. I'm feeling like an ostrich. <laughs> no, Not I, an ostrich. Christine, you would have a poodle. <laughs> no, but like I feel like an ostrich is like because I feel like I always do get a bird when I do these things, and ostriches are like awkward but like fast, and also like they're scared of stuff. They stuff their head in the ground. Like I like I feel like it does have like different. When you're scared of something, do you stuff your head in the ground? <laughs> no, but I do hide. <laughs> That's what you hide from the gobblers. Just. <laughs> Just stuff your head in the ground. <laughs> That'll keep you from the gobblers. <laughs> um, but, like, I feel like, because I, my Patronus was supposed to be an osprey, which is, like, a bird of prey, um, and they actually fly. But I feel like ostriches are, like, lanky and uh, just, I feel like, have, I don't, I don't know, I feel like it'd be fun to, like, just walk around with my ostrich. <laughs> Well, I mean, and the ostrich is fast, but, like, your demon can't move that far away from you, so he's only as fast as you are. <laughs> I can go on his back, because ostriches can do that. I've seen it in the movie. Oh, I, I suppose. <laughs> and we'd be best friends, so he'd let me do it. <laughs> oh, my God. What about you guys? Yeah, he's, he's like your soul. Like, if one of you dies, the other one dies. Like, when a person dies, their, their demon just, like, fades into nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I really want a picture of me and an ostrich now. If anyone's good at Photoshop. <laughs> my ostrich. Oh my gosh. What would I name him? Or do they come with names or do you think she named him? It seemed like they came with names. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, it seemed like they had names already. Okay, I want to hear this. I story. feel like some of them would have like really bonkers names. Like, <laughs> can you imagine a child getting to name? <laughs> My brother got to name our dog, and he named it Weagle. <laughs> to Ryan Wait, Weagle, the dog was not a beagle. The dog was like part Rottweiler. <laughs> but did that name? Oh. 
Yeah, no, it was named Weagle. Our dog was named Weagle. Yeah. Did the name like suit um, the dog though? Did it like suit it? Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Tell us about your demon. Tell us about okay. your demon. my demon. I, I'm gonna go like the answer I go for Patronus, and that is a fox. Um, I feel like you should not be allowed to do a Patronus exactly. Yeah. That's why. That well, wasn't the Patronus that I was handed by Pottermore. Uh, yeah, what was I was handed by Pottermore. Uh, like a one, an owl of some kind. I forgot if it was like a barn owl or a night owl or a snowy owl. Some kind of owl. <laughs> it was an owl. It was an owl. There's like eight hundred different owl variations that you can get. That's true. Um, no, so I I would say a fox. I like foxes because they're kind of like cute and cuddly, like cats and dogs, but they have like a wild edge to them. But they can oh. still be like domesticated. What would his name be? I don't get to name him. He would tell me. Well, let's just like, give him just a name. Just act like you know his name. <laughs> I I'm, feel like I'm like all words right now. <laughs> I think we found my ostrich to be Bartholomew. Yeah. Bartholomew, <laughs> ostrich. Yeah, yeah. What about, what about, what about Jesse? Mm -hmm. Do you have your name? Well, mine would be like, like Sebastian, but not like the Sebastian, but like a different Sebastian. I can't think of Sebastian now as anything but an evil overlord. Like, it's so annoying because it used to be a crab. Like, he used to be a crab. I'm really glad because Sebastian is a crab in my head. <laughs> Actually, Sebastian is a laptop in my head. <laughs> I think mine would be a giraffe. Really? Yeah. That would be hard to live with. <laughs> Says Christine with her giant ostrich. Yeah. No, no, but an ostrich can fit in my house. A giraffe would have trouble. <laughs> it can hang outside my bedroom window, and I can just, like, read it bedtime stories at night. <laughs> and if yeah. I need a leaf from a tree, it can bring me a leaf from a tree. Oh, when, you when, you, when you have that emergency leaf <laughs> yeah. When, if, my kite, if my kite gets caught in a tree, I can just climb up my tree oh, yeah, and get it. Because I fly kites all the time, you guys. It's a daily um, hassle. <laughs> and his name would be Alfredo. Alfredo. Oh, I like Alfredo. Like the rest. I love like Alfredo. Alfredo. Yes, like the food. Fettuccine Alfredo, but just Alfredo. <laughs> And his yeah, middle yeah. name would be Fettuccine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really want an ostrich that can talk and be nice. Now that, like, because we never get to talk to ostriches. <laughs> They're always like, <laughs> 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 are your best friend. Like, they talk to you and they know your mind and they're like, Christine, okay. is, it, is it too late to write an ostrich into your book? Because you should. <laughs> Next book. A talking ostrich. <laughs> when I do my children's Screw contemporary. Let's go into fantasy. Uh, like, a talking ostrich in a contemporary could really take you out. <laughs> it's, like, it's like when you're writing Miss Peregrine's and all of a sudden there's, like, talking animals. Talking animals. Oh, yeah. Hey, I like those talking animals. <laughs> I'm not saying they're bad, but it's like, whoa! whoa yeah, it's like, whoa! That there we go here. <laughs> yeah. no, it was just a surprise. <laughs> Jesse's yeah, like, I, I remember both of your reactions. You guys were like, well, wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Threw me off a little bit. <laughs> what, were you expecting it? Were you like, oh, oh just was with me? No, but I was just like, okay. I was just like going with it. You guys were like, what? <laughs> Because it all of a sudden like kind of morphed into a cartoon in my head, like a um, like a like a Pixar movie. You know, it went from like IRL black and white to like Pixar. <laughs> yeah, it, it went from like oh, I can easily picture this to like oh, now we need a CGI more pictures of the dog. That's true, oh. but it's, it's I can't imagine like real animals talking. Like they have to be like cartoon animals in my head. Like, a lot of the Golden Compass, I had to imagine, like, kind of anime style. Like, it was, like, almost animated in my head. Because I just can't take, like, real-life talking animal serious. Yeah. In my head, too. I didn't even think about that, but it was. Um, in the movie, even though, the animals do have, like, because it's from, like, 2006. It has, like, a kind of a cartoony feel to the actual animals. <laughs> yeah. 
How did you feel about the movie, by the way? We didn't talk about that. Or did you while I was away? Um, we kind of did, but not really, because uh, Kat hasn't seen it. I was just kind of comparing things. Um, did you like it or not? I, I like the movie. I just feel like they did take out the darkness factor, which is yeah. probably why people get upset. And they cut off the end, which is like yeah. this devastating cliffhanger that really made the book so much more poignant and yeah. like give you that twist feel like what the fork right what about you yeah i liked it a, a, a little bit more just because i feel like it was easier for me to understand but maybe that's also because i had just read the book so like i kind of was familiar with everything but like i could see myself having not read the book being able to understand the story a lot more through the movie if that makes sense um but yeah i was also like it's not as dark and they also cut out like a huge section at the end that's like really important so i'm like what are you doing here? But also, like, apparently they're recreating it. I don't know if you heard about that, but the BBC is, like, making... Oh, uh, I didn't the Golden Compass. about that. Yeah. about yeah. that. So, BBC, they do yeah. good stuff. Like, when they and make... Guess, stuff. They, have, they have cast members from, like, Doctor Who and Harry Potter joining the cast, too. So that's really cool. Oh, I'm really excited yeah. about that. Because, like, a, a I modern, think it'll be good. Like, a, a modern revamped adaptation would get, like, better graphics. And I feel like mm -hmm. the BBC might be more willing to go dark. Run with that darkness. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm afraid to go dark. Um, yeah, I feel like with the movie, they were trying to go like very kind of family friendly, friendly yeah, with yeah. it. They so. were. I mean, this is supposed to be a children's book. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Like, but. The, actual, the actual film is like very reminiscent, like the way it's directed and the way the score is, is very reminiscent of the first Harry Potter. And Chris White's actually directed it. And I feel like he did probably try to mirror the way that we kicked off the Harry Potter series yeah. um, with Chris Columbus. Like even like the way, um, the way the shots progressed and the way we saw like her running away sequence, like we'd have those like canted angles sometimes that, that we did with Harry Potter and like the music was kind of very similar and bellsy and even the sets kind of like felt like the first Harry Potter movie when we yeah. like lost, or even the second one when he's in um, Nocturne Alley, like I just was getting very Harry similar Potter. Similar vibes. Yeah. And I was like, they were trying to launch it like they launched Harry and it didn't work yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it might have been more successful if they had that darkness in it because yeah. like people love this book and the series like because of what it is not yeah. for like the polished family friendly version although this is not like unfamily friendly no. it has, like more deeper serious stuff than you know a casual kid movie might normally yeah. I could totally see why, like, the diehard fans were so unhappy with this, like, film, though. Yeah. <laughs> okay, someone in the chat was like, please talk about the characters in the plot having critical thoughts and stop thinking. Like, did you not, did you miss the first, like, 30 minutes of the live show where, like, Kat and I were, like, in-depth talking about the plot <laughs> and, like, how, like, interesting it is? Please. Okay. Anyway. Just, just click rewind. Just drag the little bar back a little bit. And or come back when it's like done and you can watch the whole yeah. beginning here. We hadn't taken a, like a fun question the whole time. <laughs> oh my God. Um, We're what did you to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of Laura, um, your, wait, how do you say the bear's name again? Yorick. 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 Literally Yorick. punching the other bear's jaw off. And like, I loved when he punched the bear's jaw off. That was so gory and unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> That was awesome. And then there's like that line about his tongue like hanging out of his like jawless scalp. Oh my god. Oh my god. And then in the movie, like I was kind of I mean like we don't need to see the violence, but like I wanted to see it. And like you It wasn't very graphic at all. Yeah, like you see him slash away the jaw and then we just yeah. see the back of the bear. And I was like, I wanna see his tongue and his weird broken mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that was horrifying. I thought yeah. that whole sequence was so... Man, there's, like, so many points to, like, discuss and think about um, about this book. But the fact that, like, the king of bears... Okay, so the bears don't have demons. Um, their armor is kind of, like, what the demon is to, their, to them. Um, but they have to, like, make it themselves, which they... Wait, I thought, do they all make it themselves? I thought he had to make it himself because I feel, other... I feel like they all make it themselves. 
Interesting. That's why, well, in the movie, you, you can visually see that their armor is different. Because I was expecting them all to have the same style. But um, the king had this, like, triceratops uh, head. What's it called? Crown. Crown, yeah. yeah. And yeah. helmet. And, like, he had, like, mesh instead of, like, the kind of reptilian armor. It was interesting. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and the whole, like, why does the... The bears have a monarchy, and like, I don't know. I just I'm interested in how that developed. Well, I, I want to know more about their politics and like, yeah. What, how how do you say the the former king's name? Is it like Yofer? Yofer? Uh, is it like Ragnar or something? Yofer. I, I don't know. Um, There's so many names that it was like so many names, and they're all well, interesting names. Well, him with his like, he wanted a demon so badly that he was like. That doll was creepy as heck. And especially that looked like Miss Coulter. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And that how was manipulative is she that she like came in and was like ruling their whole thing. Like, she's also insane because like one wrong move and you're in the middle of like these war bears yeah. who are mad at you because they caught you manipulating them. Yeah. Just like the idea that they gave this King Bear, like he was so messed up in the head that he kind of like has this fake demon that he carries around. It was real dark. For, and that he um, would believe that like Lyra was your yeah. demon and like wanted to switch over to him. Yeah. So there's this whole, uh, it was very interesting, the whole thing about bears being untrickable. But when a bear is acting like a human and not a bear, you can trick him. Yeah. Um, it, it was, it's this weird thing. So this bear wants to be a human so badly. Like Lyra is able to trick him into thinking like, cause we had this whole long section where he's like, try to trick me. And like, yeah. and they were like fighting. And I was like, how is this going to prove like, you're not a fighter, Lyra. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think he can see your punches and jabs. Like he's literally a war bear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's a bit of a disconnect there for me for like she tried to trick him and she couldn't. Um it's like that's not really trying to trick him. That's trying to like get a jab in with a stick and you didn't get past his guard. Like, and it's interesting, yeah, that the bear is kind of not aware that he was tricked by the humans. Like yeah. he doesn't he doesn't comprehend it that way. He just like he drank the spirits, passed out, and they tricked him. <laughs> like, yeah. It was weird. Um, they have like a weird mindset where I feel like they don't register it because uh, they're obviously they're not human. They're bears. <laughs> they have a whole different wiring. It was really interesting in the film. They actually um, switched up the order of which thing of the things happen. Like Lyra gets captured in the book and escapes with the children. Like lets the demons set sets free all the captured demons and then goes to. Um, the bear, Polar bear place. place. Yeah. The bear place. Um, <laughs> but in the movie, I was like scared they were actually going to skip over that whole like creepy child center experiment section because they did the bear thing first. Yeah. And then they had the children, and then the bear army came to help them escape, which I actually think made more logical sense in my brain. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that change really worked, but it was. It was just interesting to think that also that like something in the movie worked better than the way it was. Yeah, I agree with that. I liked how yeah, it was done. I well. think I kind of. I mean, I haven't seen the movie, so I don't. I don't have like that other like yeah. alternative path. But like the the whole mission was to rescue the kids. Like it's not like Lyra can do this extra yeah. on her own. It's the Egyptian people who like collected all their gold and all their men and like set out on this expedition, which I really liked because it wasn't like this little girl is like leading this expedition, yeah. like right. grudgingly brought her along on like this like complete like adult at the height of their intelligence like planned mission to save their children yeah so that's why like it made sense that like the climactic scene would be them freeing the children yeah but yeah that scene, the actual scene was much better in the book because like you it's yeah. so much longer and you get such an insight into like how messed up it actually is well, in, not, like the fire, did they do the fire drill in the movie? Or, that part was tough. No, no, that was completely out of it. We didn't, she didn't stay there for long. You know, she was with yeah. the living there for a little bit in the book, and that's what really like, scared you. <laughs> it's like, 
Yeah, okay. because she was like in the compound. Like honestly, this book it could have been a whole trilogy of just the things that happened in here, but yeah. like spread out more because so much goes down. Like that's the whole book of Lyra infiltrating the like ch children experiment camp base. Yeah. Um, yeah. The camp was really like that's so scary. The whole concept. Terrifying. The the nurses were all messed up too. We didn't get to see that in the movie at all. But the nurses were like vacant, like kind of robots because they had the operation. Yeah. Yeah. It is. I just I I wanted to see more. I mean, I know that they like intentionally went for you know kids who didn't ask as many questions and were like kind of you know maybe more dim, but. I wanted to see more of the kids, like, trying to do something. Like, everyone was, like, ask more questions. Like, this woman is saying, like, she mailed a letter to your parents. Like, people keep disappearing. Like, you should be more, like, interested in what is actually going on. Like, they, a lot of people seem way too content to, like, not yeah. know things. That's interesting. <laughs> well, when you yeah. think about it, also, like, the kids are really young. So, like, they, they're so used to, you know, following what people yeah. tell them. Yeah, yeah it's going it's along with it. Your teenage years that you really start to like question authority. That's and, true. Yeah. And at this point, like they're kind of lost and scared, and they're looking for a grown up to tell them what to do. I feel like so that's a lot of the kids were like street kids or kids who had yeah. a very like independent streak to be like out and wandering and, and to go along with the stranger. So yeah. I don't. I just so young. they're so young. Yeah. Yeah. I would have liked to hear more about, like, how the kids were um, controlled better. Because, like, it seemed like they were really not, like, the, it was kind of a mess. Like, the, the scientists weren't there to babysit. They were there to run experiments. So, like, they weren't sure what to do with the children. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I would just like to see a little more. Yeah, you know, it felt like they did need just someone to be a leader. And once Lyra did stand up, yeah. the other kids were like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. You know, like. So I think that it wasn't that they weren't asking questions. It was like that they weren't organized and they needed like a Gryffindor to like kind yeah, of. That, that is a, a big, a big key point too. Cause even when she's escaping with the kids and like some of them are like, I want to go back. At least it's warm there. And it's like, no, you don't want to go back. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. They like don't really understand because they're yeah. being fed and being treated pretty nicely. Yeah. yeah. They don't know what's going on. So right. it's understandable to an extent. But like, the part where Lyra was almost severed from Pan, like, that whole thing is, like, horrifying. Like, how could the kids not be more scared of that? If that's a possibility, like... I don't think they knew. Like, yeah, they, they, don't, were, they didn't know about it, I don't think. Some of them were talking about, they're, like, they were talking about, like, a conspiracy theory for them. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Um, but once they found those demons, like, they're, they were horrified, you know, like, it was only her and Roger, I think, that saw them. Yeah. Um, but Roger kind of spread the word when she told them, and they were like, I don't think so. And he was like, no, I saw it. And then the other kids were like, I saw them walking away yeah. with a duck. I mean, you know, the goose. <laughs> yeah. I feel like another um, reason, like, why the kids didn't, like, think to do anything is because, like, well, also, like, Lyra knows so much more going to this place they don't know as much as she knows that's why she's kind of the one to like kick things off yeah. really um someone asked this is an interesting question um why do you think the book is called the golden compass when the instrument is an altheometer and not a compass and i think i think personally it's because no one knows what an altheometer is so it would kind of deter people from picking up the book yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's only called the golden compass in america overseas it's called like um the Northern Lights, or something yeah. like that. Well, is Which that... Is, yeah. Oh. Like, I don't know that work. Like, why is it called the Golden... I, I'm mad. I'm so mad about this title. I mean, if you think about it, it like, it is... It's a compass that points you to the truth. I mean, like, yeah. it's just... that It's a different type of compass, but it does speak to something like a compass does. <laughs> yeah, and I guess Golden Compass sort of implies, like, the adventure and travel aspect of this. Um, of the book, which, like, obviously there's a, a fair amount of, like, traveling and exploring and adventure and stuff. So that kind of captures that. But, yeah, um, it's not a compass, so... <laughs> I also I think it's interesting, why do you think, what do you think of Lyra being the chosen one? I feel like we don't have any backstory on why she's the chosen one. Um, what do you guys think about that? 
Um, I, yeah, I, we don't, I feel like we don't know enough for me to have a solid opinion on it. Cause also like this book was written before the chosen one trope had kind of like run its life. <laughs> um, so like, I don't, I don't feel like it's rehashing. Like we don't know enough yet. We don't know why she's chosen, what she's supposed to do. Um, like obviously she plays a role in opening up the other worlds and like crossing over the bridge to the other to another world but we don't know what she has to do beyond that like what is she chosen for like what is her path what's going to happen so i don't know um another person said any thoughts on the anti-christian controversy about the book slash movie and i think that's just like a kind of a misinterpretation of what the book is trying to say i really think it's kind of um, talking about the whole separation of church and state is a big thing that's happening there because it's kind of like freedom well, of religion. Well, I mean, Philip, Philip Pullman is an atheist and he did write this. Um, I mean, I don't know if he wrote it to promote atheism, but like those ideas are definitely prevalent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did but, like, I, I don't, like when I first read this, I definitely did not feel like it. I, <laughs> Christianity. I think it's just. I think it's just really blown out of proportion. Yeah, well, I also don't know what happens in the later books. Like the later okay. books might like come out and like be very against it, but in this, um, I didn't feel like that. Like it, it felt like he was a little bit sort of um, like the whole idea of like only you can only learn what we teach you and don't ask questions kind of thing. It seems like he's against that, which. Yeah is not at all representative of all religions or Christianity at all. So. Yeah, I think a commentary on religion in general and the idea, like, the Crusades. Like, the, like Christian people went out and murdered people who didn't believe in what they were believing. And, like, there's words about religion all the time. It's that in general. Like, yeah. you have to believe what we tell you to or else. Like, it's... it's yeah, you know, I, think, I think that the point of the book is not about like being against Christianity at all. I think it's more about like, don't, you don't have to believe everything people tell you. Like it's okay to, it's like encouraging questioning. Yeah. Free will. Free will. Not believe what you want to believe and not be forced into um, a certain belief system. Yeah. But I definitely didn't think there was anything that like, made Christianity seem bad or evil or anything like that. I think it's like pulling, it's like pulling, you know, when you pull something that it's kind of there and blow it into something bigger, that which is what we, everyone does when a Some, is really controversial. <laughs> someone in the chat says, I thought towards the end of the series, the book's anti-religion theme became more strong and obvious. So I guess towards the end of the series. It must become like a stronger theme or something. Kind of series, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I am really interested in reading the rest of the series. Yeah. Um, and like now, as like I again, I had no idea that there was any anti-religion controversy, any hints of it at all when I first read this book. Um. So yeah, I'm really interested to read it now, like having that in mind and like going in and like looking for it. Um. But yeah, I mean, again, like he's allowed to have commentary like that. So yeah, I saw another tweet that was talking about how, um, like, the Chronicles of Narnia were very, like, pro-religion, and, like, this was kind of a response to that um, on, like, the opposite end of the spectrum. But, yeah, I don't know. I guess, yeah, I guess there's obviously, like, different yeah. perspectives on it from all ends, so, I mean... <laughs> I, mean, I also, I read the Chronicles of Narnia, and I didn't get any, like, pro-religion messages <laughs> in that Exactly. Either. Yeah, it's just like reading, like, Twilight, and they're like, this is, like, Mormon uh, brainwashing. Uh, <laughs> <what? laughs> <laughs> like, there's much more to that than that. It's like zooming in and just taking it from one thing and blowing it up. Ugh. <laughs> That's, you can say that with anything controversial at all. Like, this is pro this. And it's like, that's one tiny aspect, and that's one way to interpret everything you're reading. Uh, um, anyway. <laughs> Have we talked about our upcoming books of the month? Yeah, let's do it. Did we do that? <laughs> 
Yeah, and if you guys have any final questions, send them to Twitter right now because we're going to be wrapping up soon. Yes. Yeah. Um, so our book of the month right now in July is Crooked Kingdom. Kingdom. Yeah, 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 by Lee Bardugo. We've uh, all been is... meaning to read this book for so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we were trying to figure out what book to do, and we're like, what's a book that none of us have read that we all want to read? Yeah. This, this is what we came up with, so. <laughs> Everyone knows, like, it's book two in the duology, because I got a few people thinking it was book one. Um, this is actually book yeah. two. We, we read book one last, a year and a half ago-ish, when it first came out. So, like, we do have, we all have videos on that. We have a live show on that, so you can catch up on all that good stuff if you're just getting into the series. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it is a two-book duology. This is book two, book one of Six of Crows. Um, it's set in the Grishaverse but you don't need to read Lee Bardugo's previous series to read this one. You can totally jump right into, well, not this book, but Six of Crows. Um, <laughs> start there and then jump into this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't read the Grishaverse um, yet. And so I've, and I've been reading and I love it. So you don't need to, but I'm sure there's inside jokes that are like, or inside little tidbits that are going yeah, it's, just, it's just a few little tidbits and just like yeah. some world building stuff but like this takes place in a different part of the world so it's not even like many crossover characters there's like one or two minor crossovers yes um and then should we talk about our august book of the month because yeah. it's our we don't have it I, I, should we wait should we we don't have it because it's not out yet but i think we should announce it um yeah yeah, it's. I'm really excited about it. It's um, called Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. Kara Thomas. Yes. Oh my gosh, I don't have it in front of me, so I'm like, oh, I don't want to say her name wrong. Kara Thomas. <laughs> um, do we have a synopsis? Because I'm pulling up the cover right now. That long, but I feel like it's like. Uh, this is the it, cover. Ooh, I can't wait to get it. I'm like, I want it now. I know. So I can see it's it. Pretty. I'm trying, okay. okay it's, it's from what I can see, it's about, it's a psychological thriller. It's a standalone and it focuses on like um, reality and power and manipulation amongst teenage girls. Um, it's about a new girl who moves to town and she's like welcomed into this tight little circle of friends and like they're inviting her to do everything with them but then they don't invite her to this one party and she like feels really slighted about it but she doesn't get a chance to confront them because one of their friends never makes it home from that party and all of a sudden like the whole town like is up in arms and like all this weird stuff is happening and like what happened to this girl so yeah, dark psychological thriller. It's been yes. getting great reviews, so I'm super excited. <laughs> um, yeah, it is kind of this book, um, the darkest quarter. Riverdale. <laughs> it feels Riverdale-y. And it comes out July twenty fifth. Yes. So pick it up and join us for the August book of the month. Hey, hey. Yes. <laughs> This month, Cricket Kingdom. Next month, Little Monsters. And then I was, I was trying to think of what we're next month. I think we have a September plan too, but I guess we'll, we'll hold on to that one for a little bit. <laughs> on September, but... We'll, we'll announce September at the Crooked Kingdom live show. Yeah, so. yeah. We'll announce our lineup because we, we've had, we've, I think we have our lineup for most of the rest of the year, so you can get yeah. ready. <laughs> and we, yeah. we like announcing our fall lineup early so you guys can like be prepared if there's sequels in there or sequels hints hints but yeah this has been our golden compass live show i think we had a really interesting discussion yeah um, and we hope to see you later this month for our Cricket Kingdom live show. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you thought of the book in the comments. We'll I'll talk to you soon. I'm Christine. I'm Jesse. I'm Kat. We're about to see you next time. Bye. <laughs>